Hey guys, the video you're about to watch is the third episode of Finisher Switch, the podcast and a TV show. Not a TV show, sorry, a show. Uh, we spoke about racism, we spoke about the point of raising awareness and also whether we're going to burn out or not uh, with protesting and everything else related to that. Uh, please do watch the whole thing if you can. And uh, yeah, thank you so much and hope you enjoy the video. When, um, when, when we talk about raising awareness, is it a more to do with... Um, like I, I mean, when there's because racism is so embedded in the way we think and the way we've been taught to think, it's um, is raising awareness for uh, us to inform uh, to a wider audience that racism is still an issue, or is it also aimed at trying to change the way we're thinking about? It? I mean, I, I think that part of the raising awareness thing is connecting with other humans. It's like seeing, so George Floyd, I think, has four daughters. Is that right? Do you know I think so, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, it's like recognizing if you're a kid, it's seeing George Floyd's daughter daughters at, at the funeral and, and thinking like, you know, that could be, that could have, that could be my dad that was killed for no reason. Or for you to look at, um, George Floyd's wife and connect with her pain and coming to terms with this and thinking like, this isn't some abstract thing. This is, these are like feelings that I can connect with. Um, seeing somebody I love, who's an important part of my life taken from me, you know, at, at that for, for no reason. Um, that's a, uh, that sort of emotional connection is, is really powerful. And, you know, I think that's also part of what this, this awareness is. It's about raising awareness within yourself, but it's also then being able to ask questions of other people and have conversations like the one we're having now, I suppose as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I also feel like um, there couldn't be a better time to raise awareness just because of the ease of access we all have to be able to do so. Um, the fact that all three of us have seen what happened to George Floyd without ever speaking about it before now, and the fact that I know for a fact that I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone I've spoken to in, a, in the last year or two years who are like, who belong to my... Um, set of um, who belong to my age group I know for a fact that they've all seen what happened they've all supported what happened they've, and they're all they're all trying to do their best and it's just because of social media because of uh, our ability to communicate with ease it's definitely um, yeah there couldn't be a better time well, and this is a very um, for me this is personally something that I genuinely fear is what if I don't know how I've never been I mean, I'm 18, so I'm, I've obviously, I've never been in a situation where I've seen such a mass communal movement against uh, an oppressor, against, uh, against racism and against something that shouldn't exist in society today. But are people going to burn out? Are people, are people going to keep on protesting until change happens? Or is there going to be a point where people slowly start like shedding away? I think there's going to be a moment where people have to um, um, to stop for a moment and let people process what the protests have um, have brought to them. Um, I don't think it is sustainable to keep protesting forever, but um, it's all about um, stopping to um, assess the 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 protest. What have we reached? What, what, what was our message? Have we been able to, um, to pass it onto people? If yes, what will be um, the next step from now? And I think that is, that is important, important to think about. It's not just going to the um, streets, um, voicing your opinion and then coming back home and not ever thinking about it again. It's good 
to protest, but at some time it, it's good to stop, evaluate um, what happened, and then um, also um, remain aware of um, the fight that is going on. And that will be at every level. And as a black person, I haven't been um, able to protest obviously with people, but I, I remain conscious of um, all forms of um, discrimination against me. And, and, and I'm definitely um, watchful from now on. I mean, I've experienced um, a lot of um, prejudices regarding uh, my race, but I've never been um, bold enough to step up and talk about them. But now that I can see that people care about the issue, it kind of encourages me to, um, to kind of talk about it if it happens to me again. And I think that is what the protests are worth. Um, is it Get okay people to, to know yeah. that it is possible to, to, to step up and talk about those things. Is it okay to yeah. ask? Is it okay to ask you um, for um, an example of when you felt uh, prejudiced and you felt uh, like you weren't treated equally, just so that it's it's easier for someone like me and I'm sure people watching to be able to understand how in, how ingrained racism is in our society. Well, I like to see myself as one of the um, most tolerant people when it comes to racism. But then the first time I almost broke down because of a um, uh, uh, an issue with racism is uh, at Changi Airport here in Singapore. Um, when I was coming from Timor Leste, um, from one of our IFP conferences with a lot of people from our school, I think there were around um, 25 of us. And uh, Omar, the econ teacher in our school, and I were the only black people. And when we reached the airport, um, um, we checked out, we were leaving the counter and then um, the officer called me and Omar out and then they, they interrogated us, they checked our back and the rest of the people, they, they didn't care about them. That's the very moment I stopped, I, I almost cried, had Omar not being there. He was very upset about it. Why? Why only the black people? Because they, they, they suspect us of something. And it happens every time I leave Singapore. They always want to take me, to pull me aside and check my back to make sure that I'm not leaving the country with something sketchy or uh, I, I'm not some kind of um, criminal because they, they know that black people um, have um, this bad reputation of being criminals. And you can, you can see how people perceive um, this idea of black people being necessarily um, associated with bad things when um, um, a lady in New York, I, I think I forgot her name, called the police on um, um, a man who was watching birds in a park. And then she, she called the police and told them, uh, he told the man that I'm going to call the police and tell them that there is an African American threatening my life. We, we both know the power of language. Why did she need to add African American? Because she knows that people have a certain um, perception of uh, African, uh, African Americans and, and, and black people. So that is how much the, the, the concept of black being bad is ingrained in people's minds. So there, can I, can I just ask you a question? What, um, to, I mean, this, this sort of builds off of what you were saying earlier, but what sort of, what sort of conversations have you been having with, uh, with your family, um, if any, about, about what's going on in the, in the U S right now? Have you, do you guys talk about it at all? Um, I haven't had any, any discussion with my family about it, but I, I don't think they are um, as aware of the issue as I am, because obviously they have not been exposed to it. So yeah, but mm -hmm. I know that they do know that those things happen, but you know, one thing is knowing about something happening somewhere and another thing is experiencing it in real life. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. I really, really, really hope you found it informative and you liked it. If you didn't like it, please do leave a like. If there's something you'd like to be discussed on the podcast as an episode, please do leave a comment and I will make sure that happens. And yeah, subscribe. Please. Thank you.